for him. You know, we're praying for that little boy. You know, that's it, you know? And may God have mercy on him, you know? Today, a family member of the school shooting victim offers prayers to the suspected shooter as both families deal with the aftermath of violence that happened on the Seminole High School campus. That 16-year-old suspect faced a judge this morning while the 18-year-old victim remains in the hospital. Good afternoon, I'm Vanessa Eccles. We have been following developments for you since this story broke yesterday morning, yesterday afternoon during this newscast. We have live team covers this afternoon. We'll begin with Channel 9's Q McRae live in Sanford. And Q, you went to the court hearing where you spoke to some of the victim's family members. Yeah, right out here in the parking lot, Vanessa, I spoke to his cousin, his aunt, and his grandmother. They tell me that he's in good spirits today, but he is recovering from a second surgery to his wrist. They just implanted two rods in his arm. They said they want justice for what happened to him. The Ravia Smith was escorted into the courtroom in shackles. The hearing lasted all of five minutes. Seminole County Juvenile Judge John Galazzo ruled the 16-year-old must remain in detention for 30 days and await his arraignment hearing. Is there anything you want to say on behalf of your son, Mr. Smith? We caught up with Smith's parents outside the courthouse. They didn't speak with us, but the victim's family did. The thing he told me was, Grandma, he tried to kill me. According to police, Smith shot his Seminole High schoolmate, 18-year-old Javon McIntyre. It happened in the Tomahawk building on campus just before noon yesterday. The family wasn't allowed in the courtroom. You know, that was the judge's decision, and so um, I would have liked to have gone in because I wanted to be able to see the young man and be able to look in his face, you know, because I want to see if there's some remorse there. Baker told us her grandson was shot in the wrist and once in each leg. A talented cornerback, McIntyre has dreams of playing college ball. In the arrest report, Smith claimed he's the victim having been taunted and threatened by McIntyre for a week before the shooting. Do you believe that? No. No, I don't. Javon is a pretty, is a good kid. I mean, this is the excuse that you've been hearing lately. It's really that I'm the victim. Even though I shot people and I committed premeditated attempted murder, I'm the victim. Coming to school today is like very hard. Nervous students return to Seminole High School the day after a shooting on campus. Do you feel safe? Uh, for this moment, I'm not sure. We saw the superintendent at the school as well as an increased law enforcement presence. We're not concerned because there's, there's so many police officers here. Mike White felt comfortable sending his ninth grader back to class. With all the stuff that's going on in the entire world, we're kind of like not frightened. I guess we're more desensitized to it. A sad reality. White doesn't seem confident there's a solution. Honestly, you can't tackle it because you would have to put metal detectors in order to catch it. Eyewitness News has been telling you about threats and fights becoming increasingly common in Seminole County schools. In September, a large brawl broke out at Seminole High School, leading to multiple arrests. The school district says it's having continuous conversations with students about reporting incidents before problems escalate. We asked the superintendent what's being done to calm tensions. We are working closely with our law enforcement partners, both the, the Sanford Police Department and the Seminole County Sheriff's Office on all of our programs throughout all of our schools to address exactly those issues. Amiga! 